Jupiter and Saturn. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regas, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. We're here to help you find your way around the sky. Hey James, what's the largest planet in the solar system? That would be Jupiter. It's actually about 1300 times larger than the Earth, and you can even fit all the planets and asteroids inside it. But Dean, what is the second largest planet in the solar system? That would be Saturn. Ah, oh, Saturn, my favorite planet. Rings to forever, lots of cool moons. And it just so happens that our two largest planets will be in the sky tonight. That's right, Dean. Jupiter and Saturn will be shining after dark this whole month. And we want to show them to you up close and personal. Let's head to the sky. Okay, we have our sky set up for June 1st at 11 p.m., looking high in the southwestern sky. You'll find the moon in good position to view all week, since it'll be waxing. When the light of the moon is on the right, you'll see it at night. Hey, that's pretty catchy. Thanks. <laughs> our first planet we want to visit is the really bright thing to the left of the moon. That is giant Jupiter, and it'll look brighter than any other star at this time of night. As the nights pass, the moon will pass Jupiter. Here's June 2nd and June 3rd. Hey James, check out that conjunction. Wow, <laughs> they'll be so close together, I'll need to dance. Of course, they just look like they're close together. The moon will be about 240,000 miles from us, while Jupiter will be about 450 million miles away. So now we're going to cross those 450 million miles and take you in for a closer look at the giant planet and its many moons. Faster than the speed of light, we're approaching Jupiter. Now you can see many of its 67 known moons looking like little fireflies circling the planet. Imagine if we had 67 moons in our sky. As we get closer, we start to see the planet itself and its stripes, marking the lines of latitude on Jupiter. And coming around the side is the Great Red Spot. The Great Red Spot is a humongous cyclone of gases that well up from the inside and churn the outer surface of the planet. It has been there for at least 140 years, though many other spots have popped up from time to time. Right now, the Great Red Spot is about the size of two Earths, although it has been shrinking lately. If this continues, the red spot may be tough to see, turn pale in color, or disappear altogether. But Dean, don't get too close, you'll get sucked in. Ah! Well, that was fun. Welcome back. Anyway, now we want to look for our other giant planet, but it'll be a little tougher to find than Jupiter. When you face southeast at 11 p.m., you'll spot Saturn just above the horizon. It's definitely not as bright as Jupiter, and that's because it is a slightly smaller planet and is a whopping 840 million miles away. If we can visit Jupiter in a few seconds, why not fly to Saturn? Although to the naked eye, Saturn doesn't look like anything other than a steady, glowing yellow star, it really comes to life when you look at it through a telescope. Whenever I see Saturn for the first time each year, it takes my breath away. I think, is that even real? It looks like someone put a sticker on the end of the telescope. For a real close-up view, we're hitching a ride with NASA's Cassini spacecraft, which has been in orbit around Saturn since 2004. Cassini is giving us views like never before of the storms on the planet, its 62 discovered moons, and the dynamic rings. Although they look solid like a road, the rings are made of individual bits of ice and rock. They're rings of gravel, tiny moonlets that circle the planet. So look for giant Jupiter tonight in the southwest after dark. And search out Saturn low in the southeast. Oh, the places we'll go when we keep, keep looking, looking up. up.